Hello everyone and welcome to my video on implementing a vSphere distributed resource scheduler cluster. In today's video I'll be showing you how to create a vSphere load imbalance, create a vSphere DRS cluster, verify DRS's functionality and using affinity and anti-affinity rules. Now before we start here I just want to show you my setup and a little talk a little bit about DRS and what it's for. So currently I have two ESXi hosts and two VMFS data stores. These hosts are in an HA cluster and they can both see the two data stores. The data stores are used for storage for the virtual machines. And so currently you can see I have four virtual machines all running on ESXi host 1 which means that it's using ESXi Hosts 1's compute resources, so their CPU and their memory, while ESXi Host 2 has no virtual machines running on it, so its memory and CPU is hardly being used. So as you can see, it's quite unbalanced. Now, unless I manually choose to migrate, say, two of these machines to the second host, that's just how it will run. Now, this is where DR DRS comes in. So DRS allows the system, so there's quite a few things you can do with it, but one of the main purposes, it keeps its balance. So if DRS was running on the system, it may suggest or automatically move two of these virtual machines to the other host. So it's a more even balance across the two hosts. You can also use DRS to tell certain virtual machines to run on only one host. Okay, so the first step is to create a load imbalance. So before I do that, I'll just quickly show you my host. And so you can see ESXi host 1 currently is hosting all four virtual machines. And so now to create a load imbalance, we basically just need to utilize 100% or nearly 100% of the CPU on each of the virtual machines. So to do this, I'll just go onto the virtual machine and I'll run the CPU busy script so that will just utilize 100% of the CPU. So now I've started that script, we should be able to see. There you go, the CPU usage is right up there and I've done that on all four of the virtual machines. And so Generally, in about a couple of minutes, I'll start getting warnings on all of these virtual machines about their CPU usage, which is what we want, so that's fine. So now we can see there are some warnings coming up about the CPU usage on the client machines. It's time to turn on DRS in our cluster. So to do this, we just select our cluster. and right click and go to settings and here we are on the, under services on the side here we select vSphere DRS and click on edit and so we want to select turn on vSphere DRS and now we have some options here as well so fully automate, th this is basically how much interaction we want to have with DRS. So if we have it to fully automated, it's not going to ask us anything when it comes to moving virtual machines or when we go to power on a virtual machine where it's placed. It'll just look at it, pick the best spot and go for it, which is fine for a lot of situations. But for this video, I'll be turning it on manual. So any suggestions DRS makes about migrating virtual machines, I'll have to verify. So if we expand under DRS automation here, we have another option which I need to change. And it's the migration threshold. So this is how, how often, like how it will choose to. So if it goes, oh yeah, we could make some slight improvements by making this by moving this virtual machine it'll move it so that would be aggressive or conservative would 
basically only ever move the virtual machine if it really has to. So for this lab, I'll be turning it onto aggressive. And then we'll select OK to apply those changes. So now we've turned on DRS, we'll just have a look and see if it's working. So on our lab cluster, we'll go to summary, scroll down, and you should have a section here called vSphere DRS. And as we can see, it's imbalanced because all of the virtual machines are running on only one of the hosts. And so if we go to monitor and then vSphere DRS, We can select CPU utilization and you see here we can, it shows how much of the CPU power is being used by both the hosts and ESXi2 is none and ESXi1 is pretty up there. Now, so if we click on recommendations and run DRS, this is now, since we've set it to manual mode, it'll scan for recommended changes to improve the performance a little bit. Okay, so now after running DRS, we can now see we have two suggestions to migrate some clients. So it's telling us to migrate uh, VM1 and VM2 to ESXi host number two. So if we had this on automatic, it would, would have done this by itself. But since we've got it on manual, so I can show you how it works, we just select apply recommendations. I had an error there, just need to rerun the DRS. And here we are, we can see in the recent task down the bottom here that it is migrating two virtual machines to ESX Higher Host 2. So everything's working. Okay, so now DRS has finished migrating the virtual machines. Looking at both of my ESXi hosts, I can see they both have two virtual machines on them each. And if we go into the lab cluster and monitor, then DRS, we can see it's pretty balanced on the CPU as well as the memory. Okay, so now for affinity rules. So if we go into lab cluster and configure, and down the bottom here, we go into VM slash host rules. And then we just select add. And so here I'm going to specify that I want two virtual machines kept together. So no matter what happens, I'd always like these two virtual machines to be kept together on the same host. So I'll just call it kept together. And I'll select add to choose the virtual machines I wish to keep together. And now I'm going to choose ones that are on separate hosts. So DRS applies it. So let me just have a look. So. We'll click on this one here and this one here. So both the E1 clients we want kept together and OK. And under the type here, we've selected keep virtual machines together, which is what we want. And just OK to create the rule. OK, so now if I go back into DRS and recommendations, and run DRS. It should pick up the rule. I'll just pause the video and jump right back into it because it can take a minute or two. Okay, so I had a slight issue there. Because one of my virtual machines had a CD connected to it from its host, it wasn't letting me migrate. Um, so I've just disconnected that CD drive in the resource settings. And now I've run DRS again. And we can see that it's telling us to migrate client E1 from ESXi to ESXi2. And the reason is because of the affinity rule we had just created. So I'll hit apply recommendations to confirm that. It's expired again, so just run DRS again. 
and apply recommendations. And then we go down the bottom, we can see it's migrating the virtual machine. So now we've done the affinity rule, I'm going to do the anti-affinity rule. So basically for this, I'm going to tell DRS that I do not want two specific virtual machines to run on the same host at any time. So to start, I'll just delete the rule I created before forcing two machines together. And then I'll select add to add another rule. And so I will click the separate, separate virtual machines under the type and I'll just call it separate. And now I will add two virtual machines that are currently on the same host. So I'm going to say that I don't want this virtual machine and this virtual machine that are currently on the same host to be together and select OK and OK to create the rule. And so now that is enabled. So if we go to back to monitor and run DRS, once again, it'll take a few seconds to show up. And there we have it. It's picked up our anti-affinity rule and it wants to migrate one of the clients from the current host to another host. So we'll go ahead and select Apply Recommendations. And down the bottom, you can see it's migrating. And now if we go and look at the hosts, and under Virtual Machines, just give that a refresh. Now the migration's complete. we can see that it has kept those two virtual machines on separate hosts. So another thing you can use affinity and anti-affinity rules for is for your hosts and virtual machines. So I'll explain as I go along. So if we select our cluster and go back into configure, note that I have deleted that previous separate VMs rule. And under VM host groups, we select add. And now we'll just give it a name. So this one will be for my VM. So I'm just going to go Aaron's VMs. And it's a VM group. And then I'm going to add the two virtual machines, both the client E1s, and select OK and OK. So that has made a group for the virtual machines. And now I'll select add again and now I'll create a one for the hosts. So I select hosts, Aaron's hosts, and I will select a host to add. In this case I will choose the first ESXi host and select OK, and OK again to create the rule. So now I have them both in groups, I need to create some rules for these groups. So if I go into VM Hosts and Rules, select Add, and I'll call it Run on ESXi1. And I'll choose under the type virtual machines to hosts. And here we go, it's picked up the groups, both the virtual machine group and the host group. And I'm going to change it to must run on this host. So basically, if that host is not available, these virtual machines won't be able to turn on. So you can play around with that depending on your situation to suit what best chooses you. And then we'll go OK. And so that rule is now created and enabled. So if we go back into monitor DRS and run DRS under the recommendations, in a second or two we will have it show up. And here we can see that it has picked up our new VM host rule. 
and it says to migrate this client from this host to the other ASXi host. So we just select apply recommendations. Now you do have to be careful with those rules, especially um, because things like vMotion won't work. It, DRS won't migrate the virtual machine to another host if it's not allowed to run on it. So you basically just have to think it out how you want it to run if you're okay with it sometimes running on the other host or you only want it running on that host. And that is all for my video. Thanks for watching.